Hi, I'm Peter Kalmström of Kalmström.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I will continue with the automation bit of my contract management system. The important thing when it comes to my contract is that one week before the renewal or expiry date, the responsible counsel should get an email prompting him or her to review the contract. So I've created a document library here with some metadata, and one of those is the renewal or expiry date. And as you see, there's one contract here that expires in one week from now. Well, you don't see that date, but that's today's date. It's the 19th of July. So this is due for an renewal today. So it's um, long overdue to build that flow then. Uh, there are several ways of doing this automation bit, but I'm going to be doing it in flow in this demonstration. So let's create a flow. Click on create flow here. Scroll down all the way and see your flows. Opens up in a new tab. And here I see my existing flows and I'm going to create from blank. Insist that I'll create from a blank. And the trigger, the thing that starts this workflow is going to be a schedule. I already have that here. If you don't see it, you can of course search for it because that's the trigger that you want to use. So you want to get a recurrence schedule. Uh, it's going to be once every day. Here you can set advanced options like, like the time zone and what hour you want this to run. And that might be very important for you, but I'm going to skip that now in this demo. And then we get to the difficult part here. We're going to get the items from SharePoint. And the difficult part is actually getting only those items that are due for renewal today. So I'm going to find the get items SharePoint action, and then I'm going to use the legal site that we're working on here. And the SharePoint list that we're going to be using is a library. That's why it doesn't show up there. So I need to type that in. Contracts is what it's called. And now we get to the complex bit. We're going to build a query here, an OData filter query. And that sounds really bloody, and it's not trivial, but, but it's not that difficult either. So we're going to find all the ones where the field renewal date, that's where we're going to be working with renewal or expiry date. So let's look at that column um, because we actually want the internal name of that. We can't just type it like it is. This is the internal name at the end here after the field equals there. So that's the field name you want. Also, I've brought up a web page here to URL decode. And as you see, I've already decoded this string here. So this is the string, how it's encoded for the spaces because uh, internal field names or internal column names in SharePoint cannot have spaces. So this is how it's encoded. So we need to get that and then paste that in there, the filter query. And that's going to be uh, equal to just typing EQ. And then we're going to do a string, which is the date for today minus seven days. So we're going to build a query for that. So it's going to be an expression. So first of all, we're going to use the function format date time. There you go. And we're going to give that an input of add days. And the date we're going to add days to is the UTC now gives us the current time in UTC format. And then we're going to deduct 7. That gives us the date 7 days ago. And then we're going to get the format for that. And this syntax is, of course, very, very important. So I'm going to format that as YYY, four Ys for the year, full year, MM with capital M's, and DD. That gives me the ISO standard date format of um, the current time minus seven days. So I'm going to click OK there and hope that it ends up in the right place. Yes, it did there. And then I'm going to just end that with another hyphen there. So that's my query. That's the most difficult of part, of course, getting that in there. So once we have that, we have a collection of items that are up for review. Then we're going to do a new step. And that's going to be under more here, you can find add and apply to each, because there we have a collection of items. So we're going to add and apply to each here. And of course, the list of items is what we're going to be using 
here. And for each of those, we're going to add an action. And that's a rather simple action. So we're just going to send an email using Office 365 Outlook. And we're going to just scroll down until we find send an email. There we go. And then we're going to specify the email address. And of course, we want the responsible council email. That's what, the one we want, of course. Subject, contract to review. And then we're going to just give the name of the contract. So let's find that. Dynamic content. Well, let's just do the name there. That's perfect. And the body. We'll just do a link there, and that's going to be a, a hyperlink. So let's say that this is HTML. Yes. And in the body, then we specify a href equals citation mark. And then we find the link to item. There are several ways to build this link. Whoops, I didn't get that. Let's try it again. There we go. It's several ways to build this link. I have another demonstration about that. But moving on here, and then we just click here, and then we get to the actual document properties for that. And then we're just going to close the href tag there. All right, so then we have the HTML of the body also. Very rudimentary, but this shows you the basic of doing a reminder in Flow. So I'm going to save that now, and let's test it so that everything runs. I'll just perform the trigger action. And of course, this trigger action is a schedule. So as um, the flow doesn't actually need any input, so I'm going to run it. And I'm going to see the activity. I'll see that anyway when I click Done here. The flow ran successfully. All right. The input array was empty. So let's look into that. The troubleshooting is, of course, a beautiful skill, which we need to know. So let's get into this and see what the query is. Here's the inputs. As you see, renewal dates equals the 12th of July. All right, so that's my problem. I did the math wrong. It should be, of course, be plus. You to see plus seven days. All right, so let's um, go ahead and edit this, and let's try it again. So that this this formula, and then we do the you to see now plus seven days. Scroll out there. Uh, we don't need the minus, we just remove that, and then it's important to click update, not just enter or anything there. We need to update that. And now let's test this again. And I'll just use the data from the previous run. Run that. Get items. Now we should, of course, get one item. Yes, we got one item here. So that should be fine. So let's just go in and look at the our, our mailbox, I'll open that in a new tab and see if we got the email. There we go, contract to review, service level agreement, click here. All right, so we have a flow that runs and all is good. I'll just uh, go ahead and rename this. Remind about contracts to review. All right. So that could save us a lot of hassle, of course, and I think we have solved the problem of the automation step here in about 10 minutes. Thank you for watching this demonstration.